Hi friends, welcome to Meals with Maria. Today we're making some more dirt cheap dinners. We are working with some dirt cheap budget favorites such as fish sticks, boxed mac and cheese, and regular old dollar loaf of sandwich bread from Walmart. I promise these meals will fill your belly, not break the bank, and are 100% delicious. Why not start with an old favorite using our dollar loaf of Walmart bread. You can get white or wheat. You can get so many slices for so cheap. We are going to make a very simple tomato sandwich, which is perfect this time of year. I also got some Pringles to go with my bread because I think they were the cheapest chips that I could find for a dollar thirty something. However, use whatever you have around your house, or you can even grab chips for a dollar twenty-five at the Dollar Tree had some light mayo. A full thing of that is $2.80, but I've also shared how to make that at home if you have oil and eggs at home. So I will make sure to put that video as well as a recipe down in the description box if you wanna make your own. And then tomatoes, like I said, this time of year, hopefully you can get some at a farm stand nearby for next to nothing because they are in full bloom where I am. But if you can't, you can always just get them at the grocery store as well. And they're still really good because they are in season and they're relatively inexpensive. Depending on how many sandwiches you wanna make, you just wanna slice up a tomato or two or three into thinner slices. This is gonna be the main component of our sandwich. This is kind of the meat of the sandwich, but if you've never had a tomato sandwich, oh, I recommend you try it. And then make sure to salt those tomatoes. I am using a Malden finishing salt, so if you have something that's like a thicker salt, go ahead and do that. But regular salt will do as well. And then we're gonna make an aioli. So put two, three tablespoons of mayo into a bowl with another tablespoon of olive oil. I'm using about a teaspoon of dried basil, but if you have fresh, go ahead and use that. I think it was pouring rain when I made mine, so I wasn't about to go out and pick any. You could also use an Italian seasoning if you do not have basil because Italian has that basil in it. And then I'm adding a little bit of garlic powder to this and really anything that you like, go ahead and add it in. I'm also adding a little bit of red pepper flake just to give it a little bit of a zing. But if you do not like red pepper flakes, don't add that. Making an aioli is so cool because it's just based on what you have on hand. Just add a little bit of oil in there and whatever seasonings that you like and you're all good. Now I just toasted up my bread because I like a nice crispy toasted bread when I'm having a tomato sandwich. I just feel like it makes it feel more fancy. But if you wanna have a soft bread and not toast it, go ahead and do that too. And then you just wanna put your aioli onto your bread and put your tomato slices onto your sandwich as much or as little as you like. And it's that simple. This is just a gentle reminder that you don't need a lot of ingredients or a lot of money to make a very special meal. Now this next fabulous dirt cheap dinner is a fish taco and we are going to use an age old budget favorite fish sticks. You can get that huge package of 44 fish sticks for $3.44 at my local Walmart. I also grabbed an eight ounce container of sour cream and on hand I had some lime juice and a little bit of garlic powder and some cumin and we're gonna actually just make up a sauce for our fish stick tacos while those fish sticks cook. You just wanna cook the fish sticks according to the package directions and cook as many fish sticks as you want to make tacos. I feel like it is unlikely that you're going to want 44 tacos, but hey, if you're really hungry or you're a big family, you can make 44 of them and you still only spent $3.44, so it's a great deal. Then I grabbed some street tacos. These are smaller corn tortillas and they were under $2 for the street tacos. And I think you could even get them for cheaper. I swear I've seen them sometimes for like 98 cents. So it kind of depends on the brand or what they have in stock but very, very inexpensive. And I think 24 come in that package. So yes, you can make up to 24 tacos by only using half of your fish sticks and your entire package of street tacos. And you're gonna be in great shape and spend next to nothing for something that is going to look so fancy. You're gonna feel like you're eating at a restaurant, if not better. 
And as you just saw there, I just heated my tacos on a dry skillet over high heat and just flipped them quickly so that they got a little bit charred on each side and they got warm. And then to your tacos, you just wanna add in one crispy cooked up fish stick. I ended up serving these at something I call wine lunch, which is where my mother and my grandmother and my aunt and my best friend all get together to um, have a great time, drink a little wine in the afternoon, and we all bring something. So my contribution on this particular day was these delicious fish tacos. Now I have one of those packages of $1.98 coleslaw, and I've added a little bit of chopped scallion to that. This is not 100% necessary, but hey, if you have it, or you can, especially if you can find it on sale for like 98 cents, which I have seen on clear before it is so delicious so to those tacos you've got your fish stick topped with a little bit of your coleslaw mix and then that sour cream mix that I add that I created earlier and another thing you can add to that sour cream mix is a little bit of chili powder to give it a little bit of kick in my case I did not add that but you totally could and then I topped it with a little cilantro a couple wedges of lime but the great thing about tacos tacos is you can make them out of whatever you have. So if you don't have the extra cash to add extra things to it, then don't do it. It's totally fine. You can see here all of the wonderful things that we had for our little wine lunch, part of our spread, and the tacos were a huge hit. Everybody was like, I can't believe you made these out of fish sticks. And I was like, yep. I think that, you know, so many times we think that something needs to be expensive or uh, extra, extra, but really you can make something out of something that is so simple. You can see my grandmother here with Ben. That is her great grandson. And that's her fiance over there as well. And they're about to get married. So excited for all of them. Yes, it doesn't matter what time in life you are at, wonderful things can happen for you. It is never too late. For this next recipe, you wanna get started by making a box of macaroni and cheese just according to the package. And we're gonna make kind of like a Mexican enchilada casserole out of boxed mac and cheese. Start with one diced onion. I happen to have red, but if you have yellow or white, that'll work. Or even just like a teaspoon of onion powder, you can add that a little later, but that's an option as well. And then I had some fresh garlic, so I grated that in there, but you can also use powdered and then one can of black beans and one can of drained kidney beans. And this is great because these are things that you already have in your cabinet. I'll be honest with you, I had planned on a completely different meal this night. I did wanna start with boxed mac and cheese because I'm like, it's so cheap. It's such a great staple to get started with, but my meat was actually not good. So I was gonna use like ground turkey and that was a no-go. So I'm like, what are we gonna use that I have in the cabinet? All right, I got beans. So we went a different direction and I added my cans of beans and then one can of, it was like semi-drained diced tomatoes. I drained out like half of the liquid of the diced tomatoes. And then I added in one half of a can of red enchilada sauce. And that was my enchilada sauce from the Dollar Tree. So very, very inexpensive. Again, something I had on hand. If you don't have enchilada sauce, I would recommend just using a little bit of hot sauce and that should do it. And at that point, you can probably just leave the rest of the juice in your diced tomatoes and that will give you the heat that you're looking for. Then you wanna mix in your fully cooked mac and cheese. Like I said, it's just such a great base for a meal that can save you so much money. I had some cheddar cheese on hand, so I just grated some in. Whatever type of cheese you have, if you have some, go ahead and add that. And if you don't have any, I think it would still be completely delicious without as well. You wanna stir this until your cheese is melted. And then if you have it on hand, go ahead and use a half a package of taco seasoning. I just had maybe like a teaspoon left that I had from my Dollar Tree taco seasoning. So I have to put a note to self to get more. Or you can just use the spices that you would normally put in taco seasoning. About a tablespoon of that should do. Pour your meal into a greased nine by 13 pan. And then we're gonna actually take some tortilla chips and crush these up over the top. If you don't have tortilla chips on hand, I think that the little tortilla strips from the Dollar Tree would work really well. Or you could use like Doritos. I bet that would taste amazing over this. Even just regular potato chips would also be good. And if you were in a bind, you could even use like panko breadcrumbs or breadcrumbs, anything crunchy really, because that really gives it this nice crispy topping. And then you do want to add a little bit more cheese if you can. If you only have enough cheese for either adding inside of your casserole or on top, I recommend that you put it on top because it's nice to have that little layer of crunch and cheese. It's almost like a little nacho layer to add to it and it just really makes it very special. 
Then you wanna bake this at 350 degrees for 30 minutes until your mixture is bubbling and your cheese is all the way melted and your chips are crispy. This casserole is phenomenal. You could do so many different things with it. If you don't have beans, you could actually use ground beef or ground turkey if you have that on hand. I think it would even taste good with canned chicken or you could do some, add some corn to it. If you have canned corn, that's a very inexpensive addition to the meal as well. There's just so many different options. Go ahead and play around with it and go ahead and make it your own. Green chilies would also be pretty good in this. And we, I served it with a little bit of sour cream. If you have that, it's so good. At its core, this is truly a dirt cheap dinner. It is an amazing thing to make when you do not have extra money to go to the grocery store and you need to work with what is in your cabinets already. I wanna thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you got some great ideas. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It will help you to see my videos and I am making budget videos three times a week these days. Make sure to like this video so I know that you wanna see more dirt cheap dinners. For three more Dirt Cheap Dinners that I already recorded, go ahead and click on the video at the end so that you can get your fix. I will see you all very soon. 10 out of 10. Really?